first of all, welcome. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Stephen. How's the March meeting been going for you so far? You know, I think just the, the sheer scale of the event sort of takes your breath away. There's more than 12,000 people registered for the meeting. So that was the first thing that struck me. Um, I'm also really impressed with just the comprehensiveness of the programme. There's so much going on, sort of from, really from sort of dawn until dusk, there's some event going on. So it's been quite hard to schedule everything that I want to join, but I've managed to fit a few things in. Um, and astonished really just by the organisation, because, you know, the, the um, behind the scenes right. sort of work that's gone into organising an event like this is incredibly impressive. Now, you're Chief Publications Officer, mm -hmm. uh, so give us a little bit of an idea of, of the remit, the sort of breadth of publications here at the APS. So I'm responsible for the physical review family of journals um, and of course that includes physical review letters and then there's the, the PRX fam journals that are um, part of that family and I'm responsible for the team that run those journals and of course everyone knows they've got um, a long history and right. of a prestigious legacy and so I feel entrusted with the brand. Um, and you know we're, we're growing the portfolio so we're launching new journals we're just launching prx life in fact at this meeting so it's a comprehensive um, program but a very high quality and it's essential to the mission of the aps isn't it totally yeah i mean uh, the journals are how the, the physicists communicate their research to the community and um, you know safeguarding those and ensuring that they grow and evolve with the the communities that we serve is just critical Give us a little bit of that. A lot of the, these meetings one goes to, we talk about open access. So it's kind of, how does open access work for physical review journals? Um, well, physicists are sort of very open, have been very open in general um, for, for many years. And in fact, the physical review journals had their first open access publication in 1998. Um, and in, in 2011 we introduced a hybrid option so that authors can publish open access individual articles in some of our biggest journals. So we've been um, open for quite some time and about a third of our papers last year were published gold open access in the journals. So, but as everybody knows it's growing, um, right? there's an increasing demand and need for open science and open access and so we're keeping, keeping up with the trend. Final question is uh, when we look to the future uh, what, what, what are the trends that you see and how do you see the APS journals developing? So I think the open access and open science is one of the major trends that's driving changes in the industry as a whole in academic publishing. So the Nelson memo that was just um, released in August last year which is sort of asking uh, the federal agencies to have their own uh, public access policies, that will change uh, publishing behaviour. So I think in the future it's, we're looking for it to be more open and there's no question that that's going to be the case. Um, I think there's increasing pressure for efficiency in publishing, so people want to get published quickly. Um, there's pressure on the system in terms of the availability of peer reviewers, so I think finding ways to have an engaged peer review community is, is top of mind for us. Um, and then I think also just looking at how the next generation of physicists sort of read and consume scientific research and you know how we can serve them by looking at you know what is it that they're looking for us from next so just developing our portfolio to meet their needs great thanks ever so much for joining us hope you enjoy the rest of the conference rachel thank you thanks for having me